Right, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome, members of the public who uh, turned up this morning. Uh, the uh, agenda we've got in front of us, so if we can make a start. Uh, apologies for absence. Councillor Zelford and Mrs. Proshak. Thank you. Uh, item two minutes, the last meeting. Yes. Thanks for warning us, Councillor Oliver. Uh, minutes of the last meeting. Um, I think that um, as it's all rather history and it's all gone to the scrutiny committee and the cabinet and the council, unless anybody wishes to raise anything, take them as ready as Councillor Oliver. Um, I'd just like to ask on action, uh, action two, oops, sorry, um, point, uh, 1703 matters arising. Right. Action two, it was confirmed uh, the cost incurred of printed materials at £1,400. Sorry, could you just identify exactly where you're at? I'm on page two. Yeah, big page two. Yeah. Right. Printing materials at £1,400. Yeah. yeah. I think at the time the minute, as at the time the minutes were, were written, yes, that was correct. Yes. So that figure then would reduce seven seven hundred and sixty-seven pounds fifty on page seven. Chairman, if I can add to that, the um, seven hundred and sixty-seven in the report refers to exactly what we've printed through the Rother Print Service. And I think probably the 1400 was an estimation of the printing that we'd also done ourselves, which isn't sort of accounted for as such. So how much have we spent thus far on the process, the review process by way of printing? Chairman, I think for, our estimate is 1400 pounds because it does, there's been quite a lot of ad hoc printing. So um, that, that's, that's what the estimate is. I can't give you an accurate figure simply because that was, um, it wasn't done through our print service. It would have been occasional photocopying. So I including officer time, which is part of their day-to-day -day function as an officer with regard to the council, whatever work goes ahead, we've spent something like 0.03 of a pence so far, additional costs towards this review. We've not employed any outside agency staff or any additional staff or any overtime. I'm just trying to drive out what it's cost us to bring us to this stage now. Uh, no, we've not employed any outside staff. Uh, officer time hasn't been included. Um, that's been absorbed within ex existing officer time. So that figure of 0 0.03 of pence is a true reflection of the cost of the review so far by way of additional costs. Uh, I, I, sorry, I don't mean to question your calculation on the basis that you've worked it out on a, on a mathematical formula. I, Yes, can't Chairman, that's really not the case. I mean, officer time probably runs in two thousands of pounds in this matter. But the postage element is relatively small. Officers have been diverted from, from other work, and uh, an enormous effort has gone into reaching the stage which, which, to which we've got so far. Well, I respond to that with the greatest respect. That is what their job is. That's what they're actually paid to do as officers within the council, irrespective of what. What work comes their way, that is part of the job that we have a council have a right to uh, have an expectation to deal with. But this is purely a process that we've asked to review to take place by Bexhill residents. But and Councillor Oliver. That's part and parcel of the role. Councillor Oliver, I think it is, although the point you make is not unreasonable, nevertheless, in terms of specific cost, officer time has got to be allocated to the job that is being done, even though they're doing their job and they're being paid for doing a job, whatever it is. But there is obviously an officer cost sh that could, should be allocated to this particular item. Councillor Watson. Uh, I, I would say that this is split in air, Jim, at this time. Can we move on? Do you want to add anything? Uh, right. Okay. Any any other points anybody wishes to raise on the minutes? Yes, Councillor Oliver. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, 
I did ask a question which I didn't actually get a response from previously, uh, was the, the fact that I know that this is now being thrown out by Cabinet and <coughs> full council with regard to the mailing of Bexhill residents. Um, I did ask for a breakdown of the costs because we did have a definitive, it would appear, a definitive um, uh, um, quotation from virtual mailroom of, of a figure of £9,710 excluding VAT. And then it seemed to jump quite considerably to this figure of 15,000. Now, was that 15,000 a figure excluding v including VAT, excluding VAT? Why did it jump so significantly within a very short period of time once we had actually got a, a price for this work? Chairman, I, I can only assume um, that it was to do with the quantity as, of material that was going in it. I think the first bit would have been probably a single sheet A4 type, maybe folded to A5. As that increased, postal costs increase. Um, there could be an option, and I know some people have got prices that are much, much cheaper than that, but I can only assume that's using Royal Mail walk sort, which is where a supply of things are giving to the, given to the post op, post. Sorry, I'm trying to avoid the use of the word postman, post-delivery person, um, and they, uh, they sort it as they go round. That is a much cheaper option. What it does not do is it does not guarantee delivery to every household because it is not personally addressed to each household. Councillor Clark. Uh, just want to say, uh, I'd like to make a plea that we actually, can we stick to the agenda and work through each process? All the costings and all the options are in there. I'm sure that people are going to want to make comments. I'm a bit concerned we're talking about things that are going to be in the agenda later anyway. It's going to take us off what we're trying to do. Right. Okay, so can we then move on to agenda item four, the consultation methods and timetable? Sorry, oh, beg your pardon, yes, declarations of interest. Any declarations of interest, uh, personal disclosable pecuniary interest in the matters on the agenda not previously disclosed. Right, stage two, consultation methods and timetable, uh, which is the whole meat and drink of this morning. I'd just like to draw everybody's attention uh, to item five um, on big page eight. Uh, that uh, the meeting has been convened specifically to consider the nature of stage two consultation uh, and is not an opportunity to reconsider or comment on the following uh, items which have been determined and agreed by full council. And those are that the four options, the leaflet drop to all Bexhill um, households, the creation of an area committee with strings and also the services to be transferred to a newly created Bexhill Town Council in the first instance. Uh, I think probably the, 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 to try and keep the debate um, uh, in line with the agenda paper, I think if we can agree to go through it on the um, stage two consultation methods, uh, followed by the costs, followed by the consultation documents, and then finally with the stage two timetable. Uh, so if we may start, um, I'm looking at, again, big page eight, item eight, the stage two consultation uh, methods as laid out. So have anybody comments, please? Councillor Watson. Uh, I, I think that, uh, what I'm now looking at nine, actually, I think this is a, one we're moving into, isn't it? Yeah, um, which I think down the list that's down there, I think are really quite reasonable in the circumstances, Chairman, as far as releasing and getting the information out to the people right. who live in. And I would go far as say as robber. Thank you, Chairman. So with the silence that is greeting us this morning, uh, are we happy that the items as laid out under nine uh, with the bullet points, is everybody happy with them as they stand? Yes, Councillor um, Oliver. I think we had, there had been discussion and indication in the uh, recommendation that came out in May of using postcards. That doesn't seem to be involved here. Uh, leaf, so no longer a leaflet drop, fair enough. That's the, um, we've now got a fallback position. 
so that's coming up under item 10. So, uh, so that's a, not a method of um, consultation, it's, it's something it's, else, it's, is it? It's, it's just the stage two consultation method starting at paragraph eight and then going all the way through to okay. 16. So okay. the various right. suggestions and methods of doing it are as outlined throughout uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Yes, Councillor Kennedy. Could I have a little more information regarding the bullet point direct contact database of residents provided by D4B, either by post or email? Could I have some more information about that database? Who owns it? Um, who's on it? What relevance does it have? Uh, yeah. Good morning. Um, the database is uh, that actually we've merged them together. D Democracy for Bexhill registered a number of people in this for who were interested before the stage one consultation and during the stage one. Um, and a lot of people sent in their name address, um, a lot of email addresses. And so we can write directly to those people. And we have pledged, had already pledged to say that um, if they have registered with us, we will keep them informed of the progress anyway. Um, so that's uh, a database that I'm keeping. It's also with people who actually themselves handed in their names and addresses to the council and were collected, I believe, um, by the members. And so it's, it's, it's a combined database from a lot of sources. Yes, Michael. Yeah, jo Joanne's quite right. And, and just for clarity, we, we um, in discussion with us, D4B did confirm that they had requested people's permission to share their information with the council, because that is obviously one of the key factors that we can't just use information we receive without clearly understanding that people have given their permission for that. And, and I am aware that that permission was specifically given in this case. So that was why, as Joanne said, we, uh, we were able to merge the databases and use them in that way. So irrespective of where the information came from, either D4B or direct from us, we, we've combined them into one database. And how do we intend contacting those people? Joanne will probably, but, but I mean, as I understand, some people gave a preference for in writing, and we have always said that we will, for those who haven't got internet access, we will use that. But the, the preferred method is email or by, uh, or online. And as I said, we, we connect, we collected through our own means and D4B as a large number of email addresses. We will also use my alerts, which, forgive me, I can't remember the current figure we're up to, but it's something in the high 20,000s of email addresses. So we will also be using my alerts on, on a very regular basis over this consultation period to raise the profile. Chairman, my, my, my point is this bullet point states either by post or by email and surely by post would be going against the recommendation of full council. So therefore, should we have by post in that bullet point? Uh, I, would, I would presume that the post element is available for those who are not connected to uh, the computer. Do we know how yes? Sorry, yes, Chairman. And, and so therefore, um, I mean, looking at uh, item 12, no, that's not very many. Possibly, um, uh, possibly as many as 4,000. Chairman, we, we appear to be saying that full council passed a motion that there would not be a mail drop to the residents of Bexhill, and we have in here a recommendation that 10% of the residents of Bexhill do have a mail drop. Um, it, I, I'm, I'm not no, picking I, fault, but it, it is going against the full council's recommendation. Uh, I think that there's an element of resolving the, the problem. If a, a resident of Bexhill has not got a computer or is not online, how are you going to communicate with them? Councillor Watson. Yeah, uh, I would take that as a personal responsibility, Chairman, to, make, to bang on a few doors within my own ward by walking the ward. Banging on the door and get this information out. 
I think this is really perhaps sort of the most important part of the exercise is we actually get out and meet the people. Then we can find out who's on my alerts, you can find out who's on computers, so you can actually be able to do a, a, a reasonable, as well as be a reasonable cover of an area. Uh, my main concern possibly on all this is my ward and what that possibly would like. This whole exercise actually could cost them. But um, in, in the final analysis, whatever the results come out of this whole exercise, Chairman. So I think that's the answer to uh, Councillor Penningham's <coughs> question there. No, th there can't be any postal drop. That is quite correct because that is what was decided by Main Council. And I don't think we can go against that again physically getting out there to meet the people who are not on computers, Chairman. Thank you. Right. Councillor Mrs. Johnson. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think we might all be talking at cross purposes here because I believe it was, it's not meaning a postal drop to everyone in Bexhill who's not on the internet. It's meaning a postal drop to those people uh, who registered with D4B um, who weren't on the internet. And I, I believe we did send, how did they, were they contacted before? Was it by post? It's, it's been a mix. Just, just to clarify, the reason that we've put it's posted... It's not those yeah, 4,000 yeah, anyway. No, it's not. 10, it's not, it's not it's been in, in that number at all. To clarify, the, the reason was, was purely and simply those who, who um, did not have access to the internet, could not get in here, could not do whatever, could not get access to it, and, and had let us know they were interested. It is not a, a random postal drop. Um, the view I have taken... And if members want to, they, I'm quite happy to be, um, for if members wish to say that they no longer want that to be the view. But the view I've taken is that the process at the start allowed for an element of postage to people who had no access. And all we will do is continue that into second stage. But to reassure Councillor Kenwood, it is not a mail drop. That is, that is not what we're, we're talking about. And the numbers were not, unless somebody tells you, were not in the... Yeah, it was a few hundred we were talking about, not in the thousands. So I, I would like that confirmed in the minutes then that the postal drop that is discussed in these papers is in the hundreds and not in the thousands. Councillor Clark. I'm getting fed up already. There's a big difference between a decision the council made that everybody in Bexley was going to get a leaflet whether they wanted it or not. These are people who have expressed an interest, contact the council, and quite right, the officer is saying, therefore, they haven't got into that access and we will proceed that they get the literature. Two tiny different things. I thought that's what we said. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm confused. I thought we agreed that we would send it, but that we would keep a record of what the number was. I think that has been agreed, Councillor Clark. Right, any, any more on this particular issue? On the... Sure, you happy with that? I'm just going to send you the post with the documentary and the cost. Uh, we, we, I think we'll come back to that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so if we can then move on to... Uh, yes, sorry, uh, Councillor. Just get some clarification over the um, cards. It, who I, I believe understanding that councillors will hold a certain amount of them, of those cards, and also they'll be at the help points. Is that correct, etc.? Yeah. 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 Is that the next item? Am I jumping it a bit? I apologise, Chairman. Thank you. Next item, but one. Uh, I don't, do we want to do that? Chairman, um, it was um, intended that postcards would be available at the help point for individual individuals to come in, not for a stash to be taken away, um, and that members would be provided with them on request when they've had a request from a member of the public for a postcard. So we wasn't going to provide X number to each councillor, it would be on request. Uh, so if we then move on to uh, a, a 
the cost to date and projected printing cost. I think oh, we've really more Chairman, or less I, covered this. Yes, I, was, I wasn't Robert. aware we'd finished item 10, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, the point you want to raise? Well, the recommendation was that a limited number of postcards be produced, providing an easy way for public who are not online. Um, why a limited number of, of postcards? You know, we have a situation where, where full council have decided not to make uh, residents aware of this process um, town-wide, and now we seem to be restricting the ability for people <laughs> who have taken an interest in it to have to subscribe for a preference card as opposed to making these cards available at all contact points, help points, um, through members. Uh, why not um, through uh, groups that are promoting uh, this review so that these cards um, are a reflection of what people are, are seeking? We shouldn't be frightened of the fact that people may have a preference. And if all these cards are numbered in some way, we have a control over the number that we are releasing out and those that are coming back. I just feel we're being a bit coy in saying we want to make this an open and transparent process. Here is the information that you can collect. And if you want to make a preference, you have to get a card from somebody. Why don't we just make those readily available? Chairman, if, if, if I may. Yeah. Um, it, it isn't the case that people have to just r respond by the card. They will be able to respond online, and that is the preferred method, and it is the only method that I can use that brings this in at no additional cost to the council, as <coughs> Councillor Kenwood has said. Acknowledging that some people can't deal with that and some people may be interested, that's why we propose a limited number of cards for those who cannot um, respond online. So that was the reason behind that, Chairman. Um, Councillor Oliver, carry on, you want <laughs> Thank you, Julian. Um, but only from the point of that um, D4B are proposing to mail every resident in Bexhill from our own resources. And in doing that, uh, once that um, communication is drafted, um, I see no reason why a supply of these cards cannot, numbered accordingly, be included in that distribution that we are agreeing to do at the cost of um, the supporters of D4B, um, who have donated funds to cover that process, um, so that we can get the right sort of response that we're expecting in a very open way. So given that said, I would like to propose that the postcards be made available to a supply to cover every household in Bexhill and more, where people can be engaged at the um, various events, uh, so that we can get a true reflection of what the wishes of the people are. Councillor Mrs Johnson. Um. Oh, uh, I, I was just uh, going to actually ask about something else, but just responding to what Councillor Oliver said. I think we're getting a little bit carried away with this. Um, this was a petition that we received in the first and foremost signed by people who wish to see area um, committees, uh, and then they went on to seek another review. Um, there were, as we all know, uh, just less than 4,000 signatures. Of those number of signatures, only 75% of those who actually signed that petition bothered to respond to the first um, um, consultation. Uh, we're looking at a very, very small group of people here who are really even interested. And I think we're putting an awful lot of effort into something that really, to my mind, isn't out there. Um, but that said and done, we've had to do this because obviously it's a legal thing. Um, I would like to know on the postcards how we are, because we all know what postal votes are like, there's an awful lot of fraud can go on, what sort of checks are being made on the postcards, to, are they being married up with the electoral roll, and also do you have to be over 18 to sign it? Thank you. Councillor Kenwood. Um, Chairman, I, I totally agree, no, I disagree that these cards should be given out willy-nilly to groups who have made their position quite clear on what they want the outcome of, of this review to be. Um, it's open to fraud, it's open to all kinds of fiddling. Couldn't agree with that. And, excuse me, it is actually open to fraud on all the areas now, I'm not suggesting about areas committed, standalone, anything. 
Councillor Watson. Yeah, oh, I absolutely agree with that last remark, Chairman. Yes, this is, and I do actually agree with Ke Councillor Kemble on this one as well. Yes, it is open. I, I think it is better that we keep the control of those cards uh, much more tighter than just pass them ab for nearly out to that. <coughs> actually, uh, D4B is actually really already made up their mind exactly what they want. Politically, it, it's, it's loaded as well, which has been proved, which has proved at the town forum and proved in other ways, proven with some of their behaviour and what one has seen in this chamber. And I really honestly feel if we keep a fair way, again, it is down to the members actually to get so much information out and do the groundwork, Chairman, in many ways, that then we know that it, that is the right and fair way to do the, to do the, the actual job that and I hope in some ways we do come to the right decision at the end of the day. And I trust that I think that's what will happen, Chairman. But these are all side issues, really, of the whole question. It's almost clouding it, making it almost unmanageable, cost-wise as well. I mean, if you're thinking about number of cards, I mean, how many cards do you, are you going to print? How much is it going to cost? There's still cost involved with this. This whole exercise has cost this council really, really too much money in my opinion as a council we do have to respect value for money results and all that what's involved with it and that is basically what the bottom line is chairman thank you very much Oliver. Um, thank you mr chairman i think there's a couple of points there that just need to be clarified when the petition which was um started in 2014 it, it did state an area committee because one had to identify a preference, and that was a preference at that moment in time. Uh, things have moved since then, but once you ad identify that you're having the review, all other options were then reviewed, which was the process. And that's what we've accepted, and we've looked at them all. So that's absolutely spot on. 4,000 was the number that we had to achieve, being 10% of the, uh, the electorate. Um, given the fact that the response on stage one as quoted by a member of cabinet, was pitiful. But, you know, if we're only going to spend 0.03% uh, pence in promoting this particular process, then perhaps we've got back what we've actually uh, expected. D4B have spent in excess of two to three thousand pounds in stage one in order to make the uh, uh, process available to all residents in Bexhill. And I think as a result of that, we got near this thousand response to a rather a tricky questionnaire at the outset. It is not about the electoral role, because in fact, if you live, so if you work in Bexhill, I'm led to believe that you can, in fact, participate in this governance review. And I don't think there's an age limit on it at all. So I don't think it's a case of the electoral role. We're talking about 42,000 people in Bexhill who should be consulted as to what their choice of governance is. That's what we set out to do at the outset. That was a legal process, a legal process that we must see to the end. And democracy will always come at a price. Everybody has stated that. And this is an opportunity. I, I, I came across a comment recently uh, by a member of this, um, uh, this steering group that if there was an overwhelming response for perhaps a town council or another option, then it would be looked at again. I don't know what the figure overwhelming actually is in numbers, but let's give people the opportunity. That's not unreasonable to give people the opportunity. And if D4B who have taken a stance towards a town council, because we've looked at all the other options, so that you're totally aware, we've looked at all the other options, and this is the only viable option to enable Bexhill to have greater governance. And we shouldn't deny that to people on the back of a few quid with regard to printing of cards. Because at the end of the day, if you want D4B to print those cards, but rather a brassic and they can't afford to, then we'll take on that. And we will contact people in Bexhill. And then whatever the response is, we will stand by that. And if the response is not overwhelming, as quoted previously, then we say, fine, this was the process. It's a democratic process. We will give up and we'll go home, but we know exactly where we are. And we'll have to come again in 2019 when district elections are called upon and remind people in Bexhill that perhaps the councillors that they elected have not pre created what they wanted was greater governance. So I think that's the message that people are coming through to me in order to bring to this group this morning by way of debate and discussion.
Could, just, if I may, Chairman, on a couple of points, just going back to the first question on checks on, on postcards and comparing with the electoral roll. The electoral roll, just to be clear, is kept for the purposes of elections. And we have always taken the view um, that it should not be confused with anything else the Council does. It is, it is the data of the electoral registration officer. Um, if I get slightly passionate about that, it's because I'm the electoral registration officer and any breaches of that are a personal liability on me rather than on the council. So the electoral roll is something that I collect on behalf of this council for the purposes of managing elections and not for anything else. We can do some work on whether we think, so me, whether we think two people or same addresses have, have, have done, but that would be a very... A very, um, a very superficial check. One other point I just wanted to make to members and, and for the group to, or to remind the group is that in every council tax bill this year, a leaflet went out saying this review was happening. Um, so we have done a mail out early on and hence the reason why, given the response we got in the first one, we've taken this, this attitude that's, that's in this report. I do, my recommendation to members is very clearly, and it's, it's for you to decide, not for me to decide, it's for, it's for you to decide, is that we acknowledge there are some people who, for whatever reason, cannot reply online, which is our preferred option, or cannot do something in, in that way, or by, not even by email, because we're saying it's an online consultation, not an email consultation. So therefore, we need a quantity of postcards. Um, what that quantity is in the past, we have found ran into the hundreds, as, um, as Councillor Kenwood has mentioned earlier. Um, I don't know what the quantity is going to be in this stage, but again, I would remind members that a leaflet drop as part of the council tax bills elicited the response we got last time. Councillor Clark. Uh, yes, um, we all know hindsight, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but it would appear to me that we, we've missed a trick here. The trick was that when we knew we had to carry out this process, if we'd have agreed a budget figure at the start, we'd know what we was working with. Seems what we've been doing, we've been spending a little bit of money, then looking to see how much that costs, then trying to move forward and see how much we want to spend. The cabinet decided they didn't want to spend 14,000 on it. And we all know that democracy costs money, but I think that we, we have a duty as well to look after the public purse. But I think at the early stage, if we'd agreed there was a sensible amount for this process, we wouldn't be struggling now. Councillor Mr Johnson. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I mean, the thing is, I, I believe this is not a referendum that we're trying to conduct here. No. It, it is a consultation, so stuff doesn't have to go to every door. Um, we can't, we, whatever the result of this, I feel the council has got to have confidence in the results. And I think if we are printing cards and other stuff out willy-nilly, quite frankly, we're not going to have confidence in whichever result comes in. Um, I, I think the recommendation here with the consultation, uh, all the different things that we're going to do is, is very thorough. A certain number of postcards are going to be produced. Presumably, if us as councillors find people asking us for a postcard, we can go and get one and give it to them as it were, or um, tell them where to go to, to help them. Um, it's not that they're going to be rationed in that sense, but for us all to go out with about 100 postcards, I think seems, you know, perhaps we might have a dozen or so each so that we, we can, um, you know, which I think is fair enough. Why are you laughing? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Councillor Watson. Um, if we don't watch this here, Chairman, again, this meeting will be taken over by the crowd at the back of the room, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Oliver. Um, uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, I would like to propose that um, um, a supply of postcards sufficient to reach all homes in Bexhill are printed, that they will be printed at no cost to Rother District Council, they will be printed by D4B, um, they will be numbered, they can be checked, 
um, and the response for uh, those cards to be delivered uh, to the town hall, as people would do, or posted back, giving them the option of online, because online is not totally safe, we know that, the fact that um, there's all sorts of fraud that can be um, created online. Um, and given the fact that, you know, we are now saying we will take that cost away from Rother, let's, let's go to people with this preferred option. We know it's not a referendum, and we know at the end of the day Cabinet have the powers to turn around and say, well, thank you for that Bexhill residence, we hear what you say, but you're only going to get what we tell you you're going to get, because that's what they, they can do. But let's do that process so we're not leaving ourselves out to reputational risk that we have not conducted this process, as many other district councils have done. And I've recently read papers produced by Lower Stock with 34,000 residents, and they mailed everybody there, and, they, and everybody was aware of what was going on. It was a very detailed um, communication. Yet we seem to be failing to do that, and I think we're failing in our duty to our residents. Uh, so... So, Councillor Oliver, are you making that as a formal proposal? And have you got a seconder for that? Because I think that, I mean, from a, from, a, from, a, from a chairman's point of view, the difficulty I have is that the stage two consultation methods in the bullet points under nine are uh, the revised and standard ways of consultation as a result of the council meeting that has taken place and with the disciplines that were put upon uh, the council for carrying out the, uh, the um, uh, consultation. Uh, remember, this is not a decision-making group. This is an advisory group purely and solely. Uh, and it seems to me that the proposal that you are suggesting is over and above the, uh, the uh, methods as suggested as number nine. And I really don't think that um, uh, it, it is not our decision to make, it is for full council to make that decision to agree with your proposal. Um, so at this stage, um, I think that if that is a formal proposal and you have got a seconder or not, if it, you have not got a seconder, it falls, but if, uh, if, if you have got a seconder, there will be, have to be a vote of either agreeing with your proposal or disagreeing and remaining and keeping it as under paragraph nine. So have you got a seconder? In which case I'm afraid that must fall. If, if I could just add... Um, thank you, members of the public. Thank you, thank you. If, if I could just add, uh, Mr Chairman, I think that at the council meeting that this, this steering group now has the way forward. There didn't seem to be... I did ask the... Um, no, the way officer. forward is as this paper and the Which is a discussion paper. paper. No, thank you, if you don't mind. This paper is recommending the consultation methods. You are proposing something completely new and different, which I'm prepared to take at face value. But it, if you're making a formal proposal, it needs a seconder to be agreed by this steering group to be put forward for further consideration by full council, by the uh, overview of the scrutiny committee and cabinet and then council. If you have not got that seconder, I'm afraid it must fall. That may be. Uh, you were talking you. about cost, and here's cost taken away from Rother in, the, in, in order to provide this, and you have actually said no. That's no, fine. Can, That's can. fine. Thank you. Chairman, this has got absolutely nothing at all to do with cost. If we had a general election and the Conservative Party said, oh, we'd like to print a few extra um, um, polling uh, uh, cards so people can go and do three or four um, votes at a time, it wouldn't be allowed. D4B have, declare, have declared... They have Members declared of the public, their I must ask you from Rafaini, it's, although it's interesting to hear what you've got to say, there is a time and a place, and this is neither the time nor the place for making public comments. So if you don't mind, I'd rather you keep your own counsel at the moment. Thank you. Councillor D4B have just declared their position that they are in favour of a town council. As soon as they've done that, as far as I'm concerned, they, they can have nothing at all to do with the involvement in, in the, the process for voting. Thank you, Councillor Kent. 
Yes, Councillor Lord Amtill. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, I was going to make exactly that point. This is a strange development this morning. It seems that D4B activists have made up their minds, uh, and they now seek to proselytise the view which they have taken um, and use council resources in order to assist that, and that has to be wrong. Uh, what I would like to know is that, having made up their mind, have they published a rationale for that decision? Because that would be interesting for all of us to hear, and indeed all the citizens of Bexhill, because uh, I don't know whether there is a high level of understanding of the cost implications of what they wish to take on or what they think a new town council will do. I'm all in favour of these things being discussed very widely so that the council in due course can, can take an informed decision. I feel at the moment we're wading through treacle. It appears D4B have made up their mind. Uh, we want to hear why. Thank you, Chairman. I think, Councillor Lord Amtill, as far as the cost of the various options, hopefully our appendixes A, B, C and D will outline what those costs are likely to be, initial, initially anyway. Right, so if we move on, thank you very much, to the next issue, which is the, um, and again, I don't think this will require too much conversation, cost to date and projected printing costs. I think we've already covered that, unless anybody wishes to add anything to that. I don't think so. And so the consultation documents. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. I thought we were going through these. We went sort of through from 8, 9, 10. We've left 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There are points in there that if we are going to debate a report and make some uh, clarifications of these, why aren't we dealing with them one at a time? I'm giving you the opportunity. You did not take that opportunity. But if you wish to raise any points in 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, please do. Um, on, on point 11, because this is all about the communication again with my alerts, and it sort of indicates that my alert seems to be hitting about 50% of Bexhill homes. Yeah? 50%. So that would indicate that it's reaching 50% of Bexhill residents. My alerts, yes. Yes, my alerts. No, yes. Well, okay, all right, it's not then. So 50, perhaps, you know, this figure of people that are being... Uh, not having the availability of receiving information is out of choice. My alerts, okay, fine. But there's a big gap there, this 50%. So this is marginalisation of people that don't have this, this digital deficit, this inability to be communicated. I just wanted to make that point because it's your figure that's here. So I interpret that there's 50% of people that are not having access. And if I can go on to point 12, when we're talking about the, um, the households, if you use the sort of a simple model of the number of households of 1.5 person and half a dog in a household, and in Bexhill we've got several, I, I, I counted up over 50 nursing homes and care homes, so these people are being excluded. We could be excluding something like six to 8,000 people who would not have the ability to make contact. You didn't quite get there, did you? You covered item 14. Ah, we are going through item 14. I didn't realise that. I thought you jumped on to um, item um, 19 or something like that. I was just going through these things. But yes, at the end of the day, I just feel that we are still abdicating a responsibility, and I wanted to make that point. So have you finished raising any points in this particular report, Councillor Oliver. So if we then move on, the cost to date and projected printing costs I think we've already covered, but unless anybody wishes to make any further comment. The only, the only comment I think I'd like to make um, is that comes under the budget that we had previously set. This is not additional costs, because that would go against the full council's decision. It comes within the communications plan that was agreed at the start of this process, yes. Excuse me, Mr Chair, but was there um, a budget in that communication plan? This is what I can't quite get to grips with. Did we have a budget? Councillor Kenwood indicated we had a budget. Then I'm told we didn't have a budget, and that we were working through a process based on what we thought was the next stage. So is there a budget? Is there a budget? Are we within budget? Was the budget set out, as Councillor Clark indicated at the outset, that wasn't shared? 
Um, it does seem a strange way of undertaking quite a large amount of work, a significant, important piece of work, of which Councillor Watson said has cost us tens of thousands of pounds in officers' time, but we had no budget. So do we tackle our business as a council without budgets? Because every time we come to somebody, I often see people, sorry, not within the budget, low priority. This is high priority, but we haven't got a budget. I just find it all confusing. Chairman, just to remind members that the process was, it was not specifically included in the budget, so no, there was no budget identified, but there was a process identified which was agreed by this group and then went through scrutiny and on to Cabinet. Um, what we're reflecting is the actual spend that we have done and the anticipated spend for the second stage. So that's what's been reflected and what is reflected in here. So those figures, Mr Chairman, are under £1,000 quoting the figures that are here. What we've incurred so far and what we're contemplating spending is under £1,000. The price of the office the bank was under £1,000. No. Chairman, yeah, the figures are what the figures say they will be. They are our estimate. Um, it's not for me to comment on whether, on whether that's whatever, it, on what Councillor Oliver is saying. The figures are what the figures are, Chairman. Um, and Mr Chairman, if I may ask uh, the fact that when this process was presented the, uh, in, in, um, to the officers of, in, in Rother, um, I, I think I can quote you, Malcolm, in saying that, that the initial cost could be within 10 and £20,000, and then if a referendum it could be forty to £50,000. So we did obviously have a budget figure in mind, but we've spent just under £1,000. That's the only point I wanted to make. Thank you. Right, any further points on this? item so if not if we can then move on to the important uh, area of the consultation documents which you will need to be looking at the appendix a uh, where it gives you the outline uh, of um, the uh, papers that will be sent to to the residents of Bexhill So, any comments on... Uh, Chairman, um, I was just going to say that obviously following the decision of full council, the draft consultation document was completely rewritten and restyled. So what you've got, Appendix A, it wasn't circulated before. Some of it's the same, but it's, it's, a, it's a new streamlined version to hopefully get it down to the four pages that we've, we've done. Yes, Councillor Campbell. Um, I just asked a question. Is it is it fair and right? I'll go back to the, the postcards to have every postcard being worth two votes. I, I think what it was was it was accepting and 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 again, as Councillor Oliver said, the, the average and again of taking its figure of 1.5 per household was that. If a household wanted a card, we wanted to give people the opportunity. It doesn't necessarily mean that they have to use two votes, um, as we often find in elections for dual, for double member or wards, uh, people don't often use both, both votes. Um, I know it's a slightly different scenario. Uh, that was the only rationale for putting it in. We would, but as you say, we would expect to see the, the separation of those two, i.e. it is two different people. Councillor Mr. Johnson. Yeah, and obviously if there are more than two in the household, we can, you know, if they do want a card, we can request one. You've only got 12, really? Yeah. No, no, I can request some more if I would like to. It's just that I might have a bundle to go out with, and if I want some more, I can ask. Is that correct? Yes, yes that, that's correct. And can, can I just draw members' attention to one other thing, which is the, the, the costings and the bit on the four parish option. It is the best we can do at this point in time is an estimate because our council tax base on which we, we normally do is based on Bexhill and not on the county council boundaries. So what we've done is assessed what we think an average parish council would do with the clerk. It is an estimate. Um, you could argue some will be higher and some will be lower, but without manually adjusting the council tax base at this stage, we didn't, uh, we can't give it any more precise figure. The other thing, again, I would bear in mind, or ask members to bear in mind, is that 
irrespective of what you quote the figure of, of, of a, the cost of anything, is that that can change over time and it is only the initial cost. And, and um, obviously any other body or anything can establish their own uh, precept as time goes on. So up to a point, it's trying to give, a, and what we said we would try and do is at least explain the rationale for giving that figure. People may disagree with us in some ways, but at least it was to say it is based on this rationale that could alter over time depending on what, on what, the, uh, what option was taken. Councillor Kenwood. Chairman, as the um, postcards were produced as part of a pack which was going to be sent one pack to every household in Bexhill, which was the reason for having two respondents on it. I would suggest, as they are now going to be issued individually to people who request them, that the relevance of having two respondents on each card is no longer necessary, and each card should be for one respondent. Chairman, that's the reason they're in front of you today for comment. It's um, yeah, so. Yes, Councillor Watson. Uh, yes, I think that, that I think what has just been correct said is absolutely right. I think it should be one respondent for each separate card, and then and then that makes a clearer picture at the end of the day, possibly, Chairman. Thank you. Has everybody agreed with that? Chairman, I'd yeah. only say my comment is that obviously with two, it's cheaper to produce. Um, if you've got two people can respond on one card, it'll be cheaper than having more cards printed. Well, it is outside of public practice, yeah. <laughs> as, as a member of the council, <laughs> cabinet. <laughs> yes. Councillor Mrs Johnson. Sorry, I'm risking the nuisance. Sorry, should we have sort of, I know it's not an electoral college, but should we should we have one here, some sort of classification, like you can vote if you work in Bexhill, live in Bexhill, or are sort of 10 years old or something, or you don't have to be over 18, whatever, because it's not clear who can actually vote in this. It's not, uh, just, it's I mean, not the reason here. we haven't specified an age is that it, 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 it isn't a referendum, so no. therefore it's, it's not, it's a consultation. In a normal consultation, to be quite honest, if somebody responds with an email address that's joesmith at googlemail.com, we have no idea what age they are or if they come through on that. I think, you know, this, this is a consultation and therefore it, it isn't a vote and therefore, I mean, I think we did debate asking, but... <laughs> You, you can get into very difficult, you get into basically, in effect, running a full election for, uh, for what yep. is supposed to be a consultation. So I, I think we should, you know, my advice to members is we keep it as simple as possible and as easy as possible for people to make their response. Uh, I'll come to you, Councillor Oliver, in a moment. Can we just go back and clear up this number of respondents on the postcard? Because uh, Lisa has already said that will increase the cost contrary to council's decision. Uh, so are we going to agree that there is only going to be one respondent per card which could lead to an increase in cost? Or are we going to leave it as it is and if only one respondent replies, so be it? So, um, Chairman, can we um, have a I, I, I personally would like to keep it to one respondent. I know households where um, the post arrives the head of the household opens the post, the head of the household makes decisions, the head of the household ticks two boxes and sends it back and doesn't consult his spouse or her spouse. Um, so I'm, I'm quite happy to have it to one. I'm also quite happy for, for, for 15, 16 year olds who live in Bexhill to have a view on, on um, the governance of Bexhill to, to respond. I, I, I don't think we should stick to 18 year old somebody who's 15 years old and lives in Bexhill has a right to have a view on 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 the governance of Bexhill but, but does, does this not does this is this not a problem when the thing we've already agreed that the number of extra postcards we will do is only be in the hundreds we are now suddenly could be producing several more we were talking about three to four hundred at the most it would be eight hundred so I'm quite happy with You're that. Happy. And, and I will see that that is passed through Cabinet if it needs to go through Cabinet. <laughs> okay. 
so we are, can we just put, um, there's several people wishing to, can we all agree that we're going to cut the uh, number of respondents per card down to one? Yes, we're all happy with that, right. Now, several of you, Councillor Mr. Johnson, I think, was first. No, no Councillor yes. Clark. Just as a, a side comment, if I decided everything in my house, I think my wife would tear me to pieces because she's got an opinion as well. I could not possibly comment. No, so I'm sure in my household we, we share and discuss everything. But Don't move in with Councillor Kenwood. It'd be Kenwood. really nice, as Councillor Kenwood said, if the young people in Bexhill took an interest in this and, and, and actually got involved in the process because when we are gone, this is their town. And some of us, who knows how long, how long we got. Councillor Oliver. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I'm, I'm pleased that we've corrected the fact this is not a vote, this is a consultation. So uh, anyone who is identifying this is a voting card, it's not a voting card, it's a preference. It, it's somebody with a preference to one option or other. Um, I presume that on Appendix E, um, the return is now not by Friday the 1st of yes. September. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't want too many inaccuracies in the report because there are several in here that sort of throw me a bit. I'm a bit confused, so uh, just to making sure that that's there. But if we're talking about clarity of what we're communicating to our residents, um, on Appendix A on the front page there, under Bexhill Special Expenses, um, Bexhill residents pay altogether 664,990 each year. Um, in Bexhill Special Expenses. I'd like that to be shown really as pence per, you know, in, in pounds and pence, you know, because underneath we are referring to the te council taxpayers that pay 79 pence to fund the Charter Trustees. I think big numbers can be, uh, can be broken down as to what it really costs, because the questions that I know I'm asked is, that what's it going to cost in pence per year, per week, and what am I going to get for it? And I think that's the issue that's there. So I think to make it as simple as possible, because we are dealing with um, uh, 42,000 people out there that, that basically will, will need to have clarity in what we send out. So that's one point. Mr. Chairman, if I may, yeah, I, 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 we, we did, I, I entirely accept the point that it, it's, there's a need for consistency in the way things are, are, are produced and that sometimes saying we, we give total figures, other times we give a, to, a figure per, in, in the table next to it, it comes up at 41 uh, pounds and five pence for special expenses, if you like. But, but it is about, what we'll do is review the, di review the diagram, review the document and actually make sure that, that we are at least being consistent in the way that we're producing the data. And I think that's a, that, is a, a, that point has been made and is a valid point. Thank you. Thank you. If I can just move on to page 16. Um, 22, where there's a speech on the topic. I'm not sure why we wouldn't need it. Is it not purely as a, not as a warning, but just to make everybody aware that if the decision is taken to have a Bexhill Town Council, these are costs that will be on the horizon. So a clerk and the assistant, and when the uh, uh, grounds maintenance contract expires, the Bexhill Town Council will be responsible for it. So these are costs possibly coming down the line if there is a Bexhill Town Council. Uh, I, I, think it, I think it applies to, um, if I may come back yeah. to you, Mr Chairman, mm -hmm. on that point, I think it depends on what a town council would want to take over and what will be devolved to a town council and what our residents would want us to take over responsibility for. So that list could be an, an exhausted list to go on and on and on. So you could raise that figure. It could be, you know, 15, uh, 1.5 million a year. So let's, let's tree with the facts that they are at the moment, that if a town council took over at this moment in time, before 2022, those costs wouldn't be involved. I think we're just throwing something in here, and there's 100,000 a year. Let's break it down, as Malcolm said, in like for like, so people can see what it is that's coming out of their, um, their, their monthly um, council council tax, rather than to throw in these big number figures in here, um, we, we, you know, again, underneath that, assume a total precept cost of one million. Well, we're not taking over public conveniences and, and parks, so let's, let's look at what the currently um, there could be by way of uh, an additional cost. 
Um, I think we're just trying to confuse people in this document, as we confused people, sadly, in the stage one consultation. Far too much word, not plain English, and uh, we have distorted the facts. I'm sure that Councillor Kenwood would come back. I think it's not a case of confusion. It is trying to alert the potential cost that could be coming down the line. Councillor Kenwood. The Chairman, uh, Council Oliver is right in saying that we wouldn't necessarily devolve parks and gardens to Bexhill Town Council unless they wanted them. But what, what we must make quite clear is Bexhill Special Expenses, if they go to any town council, along with them goes the duties that Robber District Council carry out from spending that money. And I think that, that is... That is the confusion that, that even, even Mr. Lego um, put up at, at the town forum, that we were going to suddenly give Bexhill Town Council 600 and odd thousand pounds to spend and there wouldn't be any duties going with it. Whatever, whatever money comes from special expenses to go to the Town Council will have the responsibilities to go with them. If it were the ground maintenance, it would be more expensive because it would be a smaller contract. At the moment, the contract is between Hastings Borough Council, Rother District Council, and the Housing Association. And due to the, the scale that we have there, we are able to negotiate a good deal. If you go as a small town council to a contractor and say, we'd like to look after our parks and gardens, it will cost you more. Um, my understanding is that the Town Council will want to do other things. I did hear that they were talking about a help centre um, for people on benefits to help them um, sort out their benefit forms. That is something that rather currently pays the um, Citizens Advice Bureau to do on our behalf, which is better and fairer because it's at arm's length from the Council. If a town council were to open a benefits advice centre to help the residents fill in their forms, claim their benefits, that would be an additional cost and there would be no special expenses to go in with it. So what, what the people who are in favour of a town council need to tell the people of Bexhill is what they want to do. There is no point in having a town council employing a town clerk at, at, at 70, 80,000 pound a year, who will want a secretary at another 1,000 pound a year, he'll probably want a company car, he'll want an office to sit in, if he's gonna do nothing. If he's gonna do nothing. A town council will have to do something, and whatever they do will cost money. Rother District Council is unlikely to hand down to them any of the money-making um, facilities that we have, such as car parks, etc. We're, we're not likely to offer those to a town council. What we would more than likely um, be prepared to offer them is something that costs us money, like public conveniences. Yes. Jim, I mean, the, the, the points that are made are, 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 again, very valid because this is the difficulty in costing any of this because you could argue that you'll have a town council with a clerk, with an office, with a place it meets, and that's all it does, and that's the cost of it, and that cost will be borne by Bexhill um, uh, taxpayers. That would mean that special expenses on Bexhill would still exist, as they do in Rye, where there's also a town council because of, of activities that Rother carries out in Rye. So, Councillor Oliver is quite right. That could that that is one level. At the other level, as Councillor Kenwood says, the town council could say, actually, we want the grass in um, Edgerton Park cut. Let's be ridiculous. 52 times a year, rather than the current whatever it is, and that's a decision for that town council. I mean, and that that that's entirely down to them. And that is the difficulty in costing anything is. What are you costing? Because we're trying to cost on what a future decision might, might be. So from an officer perspective, that makes it almost impossible. What we've tried to do, because it's been 
people have said, well, Bexhill Special Expenses can disappear and the Town Council can take it on, hence the reason that that is in here and that, and that level. And actually, it's actually not so much a, an issue of special expenses, but it's an issue of what does the Town Council want, what is rather prepared to devolve, until you've got a Town Council and are having that discussion. I mean, I think we're all a little bit in the dark over that. At its simplest level, we could just say it's going to cost a clerk and we could make an estimate of what it, if it needs to hire premises, buy premises, etc. But that isn't what people have been saying. That isn't what in the meetings I've been along to people want to know. What they want to know is what if it did this? And it's the what if that is actually quite difficult. So just I'm not actually arguing with anyone. It's not my place to argue with anybody. What I'm saying is we could argue all day over the what ifs. It's about establishing what information needs to go in here that gives people enough to make a decision on. And indeed, in the small boxes that are on page 16, the town council would and a town council could. That gives some idea of some of the options that are available. Councillor Dixon. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you for letting me speak. Um, I think some of this involved in this leaflet is the language that, that, that's used and, and some of what Councillor Kenwood said was, I'm afraid, absolute nonsense. Um, it, there's a lot of assumptions made and it says at the top here there would be an additional cost to the taxpayer. Well, it's likely, but it, there might not. I think that should be, could be an additional cost to the taxpayer. And this about the, 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 the expenses of uh, open spaces and public conveniences. Again, I think the one thing that is likely that in 2022 it's not going to cost £910,000 because it will be a new contract. If the existing contract was kept, it would probably go up at that point. However, the, the benefits of having a town council, as we do in battle, is that if you do things locally, you can often do it better and you can often do it cheaper because public convenience is the, one of the biggest costs that we have in Rother is we have to pay a company to go around all of the public conveniences in Rother, a very vast district. It costs a lot of money for people to travel between Battle, Rye, Pet, and all the other places where we've got toilets. If, if you're doing that, by, if that's managed by a parish council, town council in Bexhill, there's not that great big area to cover. It surely will be done cheaper than we can do it over Rother. Equally, the parks and gardens, you could say that a, a town council would employ their own people. That, again, could be done cheaper. So I think a lot of this is, is, is making an assumptions of what might happen, whereas we don't actually know exactly, as Malcolm said, we don't know what's going to happen can we change this to could rather than would? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Councillor Clark. <clears throat> thank you, Chairman. Where well, we could spend all day on conjecture, wondering what things will cost and won't cost. I think we've got to be fair to our officers. It's a very difficult thing to put together. Um, they put in possible costings, but when a town council, if it comes to fruition, is elected, they will make those decisions. And if we're saying to the public in Bexhill, you'll get more democracy, you'll have a, a better council than you, than you get from Rob, and they're going to expect that council to do things. They're going to expect them to just go and mow a few bit of grass. They'll, they'll, they will think that they're going to get more involved in the democratic process, so there will be a cost, a, cost, a cost to that. And it's very difficult to nail down what that cost would be, because we know that some town councils are funded in different ways. Some have, been, have had budgets from previous administrations that have been handed over. So I think the officers have done the best they can, but um, it's not easy because we're, what we're trying to do here is, is guess what a future administration or town council director would want to do or what the public expects them to do. That is further down the line. All we can do is work on this report when the officer put together, very difficult to put together, and move it on to the stage two process. In the end of it, we now at least we're getting some costings. This stage two process, I'm sure we'll get a much bigger response to stage one, because we are starting to talk about figures. People will get more interested, because I've said it many times, many people in my ward have held back from saying whether they agree with the town council because they didn't know what it cost them in their pocket. Now we start to know. And I, I'm, those are, are so enthusiastic and, and passionate about this, I'm sure they're going to get out there and they're going to tell people. This process is for us to put the information to scrutiny. That's where it goes from here. And we need to win the hearts and minds of people back still. 
You can take a horse to water, they can't make a drink. If this is what they want and they're motivated to take an interest, we will get a massive response. But it's in, it's in their laps, not ours. Chairman, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's helpful, but I'll, I'll suggest it. Um, the paragraph that starts, if Bexhill Town Council, it, would, would it help if that was um, preceded by something like, by way of example, um, just to, to, to give people some a bit more information and just insert the words, by way of example, if a Bexhill, if Bexhill Town Council took over? Like I said, I'm not, I, I, I don't think for a minute it answers everything, but I, I do think that if we don't put something in on what things could potentially look like, that will be an obvious question coming back. So that was um, by way of suggestion to the group, Chairman. Councillor Earl. The debate has gone on this morning um, with fours and pluses, and we seem to have lost sight of the fact that every one of us was elected by a few people. Think about the turnout at a, a, a by-election or at our district elections. And we get in with probably 60% of the people not voting at all, not getting involved, 30% getting involved. Yet we, and I say we, not political at all, will then try to ad administer uh, a, a form of government that delivers the best services we can with the resources we have. All we are think I'm thinking this debate is about, really, is giving people choice. If the people of Bexhill did not want any other form of government, and they say it, what are we frightened of? If they say quite clearly, we're not interested, accept it, carry on as we were. But if they want something, surely we cannot be that arrogant as to say we know better. Be honest with them. Tell them what we're going to do, make it as easy as possible for them to participate. And at the end of the day, if they don't, then only they have, have made that decision, not us, not, not a few elected people, and non-elected people, it'd be people out in our community. If they want to actually be part of this process and hand on something better to future generations where the sense of community, the sense of identity of being a resident of Bexhill and not just a resident of Rother would be their choice, not ours, theirs. So I, I really think that, you know, there's been some really pointed discussions going on here this morning between uh, different factions within the, in, within the council. But we are a very small minority of people. How I, I don't think we have the right to dictate to them what they should have. Let them choose. So that is the whole point. Uh, Councillor Earl, of making sure that the options that are being sent out try and show as clearly as possible Great. in unknown circumstances what the opportunities and what the challenges will be on the decisions that are going to be taken. Councillor Kenwood. Thank you, Chairman. Um, on the assumption that had this been approved through Cabinet and full Council, by now it would be well on its way to every resident in Bexhill. Can we not just leave Appendix A as it is, as it would have gone out, and get on with the rest of the meeting? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is your decision. It's, 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 it's the group's decision. But I mean, the thing about it is what I would quite like to see as chairman is that it, there is broad agreement, and I'm sure that Lita and the officers would like to have broad agreement that the Appendix A is, is agreed, if necessary, by a majority, that that is what is going to go out. And sure. you know, option two surely, and three, surely we, we, this bit of paper, this backing paper. Surely we've done that at a previous meeting. Well, it, it's not quite the same, is no. it? No. 
No, Chairman, it was rewritten because the previous draft was based on the three options, where this has now got the fourth, and it referred to the leaflet drop, so it was sort of restyled and rewritten. But the basic information is the same. Yeah, the, 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 the costs in Appendix A don't change at all because of no. the, the additional no. option that was put in. Um, so we, we, we have approved it. Um, scrutiny's approved it. No, Chairman, it didn't go to the Scrutiny Committee at all. It was supposed to go to the meeting that we post we cancelled. Uh, I think that the councillor is able to make up his own mind without receiving written advice from members of the public. Councillor Oliver. Um, thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, all that um, Councillor Earl identified is absolutely right, because the Localism Act, which is what we're about here, you know, the Secretary of State is talked about devolving to the community, not for us to prescribe to the community what services they will have or otherwise. It, it would be for the community to say, this is what we feel are options for our town. So I think that's very, very important. And it's difficult to be able to go forward and predict what services and what costs, because we don't know. Because they could all change. And the, 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 the contracted services could all change. Who knows? Was it 2020 when all of a sudden the um, central government uh, funding goes by the by? We're going to look at a completely different picture. And perhaps at that time, rather, we'd be quite pleased to have a, uh, a local town council in order to pick up some of the costs specifically for Bexhill because it might make their overall job easier. Um, so it's all about clarity. I think we want to make sure it's clarity. And I don't like the fact that we're putting in, if we're going back to option two on Appendix A, if Bexhill Town Council took over parks and open spaces, and we, could, we could put a whole raft of things in there. If Bexhill Town Council took over tourism and local economy, if they took over local grants, um, sports and leisure, bins and benches. You know, we've got a massive figure to go in there. So I think we're distorting it by throwing in these two that are there. And I think we all do realise that the special expenses if, uh, are there to meet special Bexhill events. So we understand it's not just a, a lump of money that would be given to a town council to spend willy-nilly. Um, I think what we want to try and get at is, a, is the ability to get people to, to have a preference for a model to give us governance for this town. And if they, if they, ref if, if they don't come back with the numbers that we're expecting, then it's job done. They don't want it. What I'm looking forward this morning, and I'm sure that the officers are as well, is that the Appendix A uh, is approved as part of the consultation document going out to members of the public to give the broad view of what the options will mean for the Town Council, the Area Committee, and the four parish councils uh, for Bexhill on Sea with the, the rider that the uh, uh, Executive Director has already pointed out. Um, not complete costing. Yes, Councillor Watson. We move uh, Appendix A forward as it is, as, right. a, as it's written, and then and but stating possibly with that it is only for guidelines or something like that. Uh, and you have got a second of that. Well, I don't know. Have I? Second. Councillor, before I take that vote. Uh, we've got several. Um, the um, executive director is pointing out that he wishes to add. Uh, Chairman, I do think to, t to take Councillor Oliver's point, it is it is fair to say that by looking at those bits, it is by way of example. It is not a it is not a saying that that is what's going to happen for precisely the reasons that Councillor Oliver. Sorry, Chair. And, and the reason that they're in there is that was in the discussion of this is was about those are the things that I think through cabinet and full council. So that was, the, but I still and, and I, I take that point entirely, and that's what what we've been asked to do. But I still think we should probably have written it as by way of example yeah. because that is a two-way process to, to to get to that point. Councillor Kenwood. That's fine. I, I was just I've got a point proposal and seconder to agree this document, but before I take that as a, as a vote, Councillor Oliver. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, if we're looking at, by way of example, then I see there's no reason why a t in the, under the Town Council, it could not indicate that the Town Council could prepare a neighbourhood plan, 
uh, a town council has the ability to receive revenue from the, cust uh, the community infrastructure levy, the ability to grant, apply for grant funding, the ability to provide additional services to the community might need, including those cut by county or district council, the right to be consulted on planning issues, and the separate legal status of a town council enabling it to take decisions independently of Rother. It's set out in Appendix B. I think the important thing is it's... It, it's give, uh, you know, given, I think these should be included in the correspondence that goes out to um, um, uh, residents, or was available to residents, um, because otherwise we're only, we're only giving examples that are perhaps could be construed as slightly misleading because they're contracts that won't come in anyway. So let's, let's, let, let's, give, let, let's, let's uh, massage up the number of examples, perhaps. Chairman, if, if, if I may, I think, I think some of those points, without reading it, are covered in the frequently asked questions, which, which, which go alongside that. I, I think the other thing we have tried to do is to get this into a readable size. And if I'm being perfectly honest, I think four pages is probably beyond that. But it, it's an ex because the, the, the view generally that, that is expressed, and it's slightly anecdotal, but with, with, with a little bit of behind it, is that you have the distance between somebody's post box and their bin to actually attract their attention and get them to read something. Um, so it's trying, to, it's trying to, hence the reason we put little boxes on the document to try and highlight that. I think, and like I said, Councillor Oliver may well come back to me and say, it's not all covered in the FAQs, and I would, I would acknowledge that, but I think most of those are covered under the, the frequently asked questions. If they're not, then what's wrong with that? And, and if they're not we'd be more than happy to, to look at them because the frequently asked questions are actually what they're supposed to be. They're not all the questions that have ever been asked. It's what people ask us. So we do see those as a, a living document as the, as the process goes on. If there are other issues raised, we'll amend it at that point. Right, so uh, we're approving the consultation document, Appendix A, with the uh, small amendment as uh, recommended by the Executive Director. Yes, all are happy? Yes. Fine, good. Right, then if we can then move on to uh, the Appendix C, which is on big page 21. Uh, I think that's straightforward. Yes, Chairman, that's just the A5 two-sided flyer. Two-sided flyer, everybody happy with that? Uh, Appendix D, which is uh, the poster, and Appendix E, which is the uh, the card, the postcard, um, as, amended. as amended with just one responder rather than two. Everybody happy? Uh, as amended, an additional cost now, isn't it? Because you're going to have more of these, but we will pay for them if you find that you are uh, running a bit uh, short of funds. Uh, the appendix eight, uh, append the frequently asked questions, FAQs, uh, and that is a, a living document which can be altered and added to as we go along. Councillor Johnson. Just a small point really on um, frequently asked question 10, when it says who is my ward councillor and where do they live? I think really it shouldn't be where do they live, it's how do I contact them because uh, most people are contacting us by email and I don't really think we need people queuing up at our door. Um, so I, I do think it should be how do I contact them and if you don't know who your local ward councillor is and where they live, it should just be how to contact them. Um, because there are more ways than our letterboxes. Yes, Chairman, I think we put that in originally because in case we thought residents may want to drop their postcards through well, your it, letterbox if we were doing the mail drop out. So that was would, a previous draft. That, yes, absolutely. Living, but I just thought how That's to why contact I had that. them is, is actually better sure. because people need telephone numbers and emails and everything else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Chairman, thank you. Uh, just to make a, a plea to members, if you are asked questions and it isn't on the, the frequently asked questions list, can you please let us know so we can update the list? So if you're getting feedback on issues, I'd be grateful if, if <coughs> Lisa or her team could receive that feedback so at least then we know that um, to amend it and add those questions. Councillor okay. Dixon. Chairman, uh, question 28. 
implies that any town council would be totally truthful. Um, it sort of will, have, will affect the town council be able to make all decisions of X, Y, Z? No. But it would be able to make decisions on any services devolved to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, um, and I do think that the, 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 the wording there that only suggests that a town council would be able to influence things, and of course that's not true. Chairman, if I may, yeah, I, I think I think that's fair comment, and we, we can we can clarify that yes, it would make it would make decisions on all those matters, either devolved to it or that it took on, because it could take on other things that are not necessarily devolved from rather. So I think that's uh, that's a point. I'd happy happily take that on board, Chairman. Chairman, I think that was included because because I think there was some misinformation about town councils could do planning, for example. So we were just trying to make that yeah. point. Mr. Johnson. Oh, sorry, I'd left that on. Um, sorry, I, I'm just wondering about uh, point 29. There's some really subjective um, um, points made in there, uh, and anyone reading it might think that that was meant to be factual um, when it said redressing the bias shown. They're, they're, these are all very subjective things that people are saying. Personal views. Right? Personal views. And also, um, a town council would be able to contract respond without political bias. Well, we know that most town councils are actually, actually elected um, by party order anyway. And it just seems to me there's a few things in here that are just totally subjective. And about the fact that if you had a town council, uh, it would be run by Bexhill residents, obviously elected town council, who are actively engaged and emotionally invested in Bexhill, as if district councillors are not. Chairman, uh, it just seems a, a bit strange. Um, there are just some strange phrases in there. They were the responses from the stage one right, responders. So that, yeah, so they are. But they, they're what of. the residents felt. Yeah, well, would it, be the case. It, it's put down here as if it's sort of factual. This is the view but, put forward by but, but it is factual because they but were responses the given forward, by residents. It's only personal view. Isn't it? It's personal view. Yeah. It's not what yeah. it's not what they're so the perceived benefits of the town council, not benefits. Uh, yes. So I think the key in this is um, these perceived are some of the views benefits. put forward. You've got to highlight that in enormous letters. Otherwise, people could easily go from reading yeah. what are the benefits of a town council. It would address the democratic deficit. Nobody's ever looked into whether that really is the case or not be a little bit careful. There are 31 towns and parishes in our district, and only six of them had elections last time round. Um, if there's a democratic deficit, then some of us need to do more work there. Uh, this business about political bias, well, we're all going to take different views on that. We must make absolutely sure that these are some views and not the oracle. I think that it, it, Although I hear the, the point you're making, Councillor Mrs. Johnson, the views put forward by respondents to stage one consultation for the benefits of a town council for Bexhill, exactly the same thing applies for the benefits of an area committee for Bexhill and for leaving things as they are. And I think in some ways it is not a bad thing to have personal views strongly held put forward made clearer and the same with the area c committees you, you don't think that it's uh, it's in bold type anyway that there are some of the views put forward by responders i mean other than double heading it i mean uh, yes. chairman th th this is a document being produced by rother district council going to residents yes. therefore they will assume no, no, it's not going to residents it's a, these are uh, faqs yes. these are online they're, they're online, so right. residents can look at them. They will assume that that is Rother District Council's view, when it actually isn't. It's the view of of D4B. Happy to take them out if that's what members wish. Councillor Oliver. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, 
we shouldn't get touchy about being challenged and criticised here. These are people who have responded to stage one, which we asked them to do. They made these responses, and these are quoted. So these are some of the views put forward by the residents at stage one. Now, you may not agree with them, and we don't always have to agree on things, but that's what people are saying. So it's not unreasonable to put it in there. And if we're saying that that's somewhat biased, then look at number section 31. What are the benefits um, of leaving things as they are? Well, you know, I didn't see too many of those responses, but okay, they're in there, they're in there, you know, let's be fair. And that's what people are, uh, are, are expressing. So why are we touchy about people's views? Why are we touchy about Put being challenged? Put the that's what democracy yeah, is, isn't it? Being challenged? Chair, chairman, if, if, um, th th this, was, this was a bit of a balancing act in, in one sense, and, and Lisa and I did have a discussion colleague, with colleagues about whether it should be in there at all, because they, they are views expressed. Having said that, in stage one, we did ask people for their views, so they were, we invited their views to us. I mean, it may be that what we can just, is, is incorporated in a, in a section, because some people may say, okay, this is stage two, well, what was said in stage one so it may be that we can incorporate a section that just says, here were the views expressed on stage one on town council, uh, area committee, things, so that we just, we, we just make it clear rather than that it was the views expressed by responders. Because I do feel, and my advice would be, having asked people for their views is um, yeah, you, you leave yourself wide open in one sense. So, um, but as long as it's not, as you say, portrayed as the official view, whatever the official view happens to be. So we, we could, I was going to say, play about with those boxes. Our advice is that, on balance, we should probably include them, but I do think it might be possible just to clarify that they were views expressed in, in stage one. So, so could we, in fact, exclude 29, 30, 31 and have it as an addendum? Chairman, we could make it a separate document altogether, just views expressed at stage one on the website if that's more helpful, yeah. rather than take part it, of the FAQs. Take, it, take out. it out of those. Although if it's part of FAQs, it is seen as when people are looking for frequently asked questions, that is all part and parcel of something they're looking for. Mm. I mean, it, it, well, whatever. Well, Chip, thinking, thinking out loud here, I just think we could just head up 29 as views expressed in, in stage one. Now, whether you, I, I, I would be inclined to keep it as part of the FAQs because that's where we want people to go to get answers and rather than have to search different documents. But uh, we could just make it clear that rather than being titled up what are the benefits of, is just our, what were the comments or, yeah. from. Um, but I think the comments are valid. We may not agree with them or you may not agree with them, but they, are, they were comments that people made. And, and would you move them to the end of the of FAQs rather than having them, in other words, have them as 36, 37, 30? Yeah, we could, we could, well, just move the, they would move, out. yeah, they would move yes. out to the end, yeah. yeah. Move them to the end. Yeah. All right, everybody content with that? Uh, so we then come to the uh, last item, I, the determine the length of stage two consultation, the timetable for the remainder of the review, which is on big page 12. And the alternatives are that the stage two consultation will go to the 29th of September or timetable two to the 13th of October. But it all finishes at full council on the 18th of December. But it's just a case of members deciding whether the stage two consultation ceases on the 29th of September or you actually give everybody another fortnight worth of time to, to reply to, to uh, consultation. So, Councillor Watson. Uh, I would like to move, Chairman, that we do timetable one. The reason I say that is the amount of work we have as, during the accounts as councillors is quite gets quite busy in October and November period, and it's it's to find time to actually get out and promote this whole exercise. It's a bit much, really, in some respects. And so I would like to propose that, Chairman, if that is possible, if I could have a second to or something. 
You're, you're talking about this fortnight in October, extra fortnight in October. Fine, right. Anybody? Yes. Um, well, you know, bearing in mind that we should have been into stage two from the first of whatever it was on its way. Um, you know, to deny the process, you know, to put uh, the whole thing under pressure for four weeks, um, I'm sure there's going to be time from the 13th of October, that's two months into December, to uh, put together what's necessary if it hasn't already been predetermined and decided. I don't know, perhaps it has. But um, I, I just sense that, let, let's be fair, let's be fair, uh, the whole process has been delayed uh, because of the um, option that was thrown up at scrutiny by um, uh, a councillor who didn't really understand Bexhill, but he threw in a, a, another option, fine. Um, it was then sort of confused again at um, Cabinet with the four parishes, which we haven't really touched on too much today, but goodness knows how that would work. So, you know, given the fact that those delays have been incurred by Rother District Council, um, um, let's, let's, let's be fair to residents of Bexhill to give them this six-week consultation period, which was deemed to be at the original outset, and I see no reason why that should be changed. Move timetable one. Timetable one weeks. has been moved and has been seconded. No, second. And Councillor Oliver, I think, is promoting the. No, no one's seconding it. You want timetable time two. Time table two. two. <laughs> second two. Right. So the uh, the uh, timetable two has got a proposer and a seconder. All those in favour of timetable two? Timetable two is agreed, so that means that it will close at 4.30 p.m. on Friday the 13th of October. Yes. Yes. And I hope that Friday the 13th of October is not a bad omen. <laughs> Councillor Mrs Johnson. I'm going, going backwards here, but uh, just as we're finishing the meeting, uh, given that Councillor Kenwood said about, you know, involving younger people more, and we're not sticking to, uh, it's nothing to do with ageism, 18 and stuff, could we do some consultation in Bexhill College um, to add to our list of consultees? We, we can we can certainly look at the practicalities of that. Yeah, sorry, I don't mean to sound vague, but I do know sometimes getting into schools and colleges can actually be quite difficult. But, but I mean, there may be an option if it may be so bold as that some of the members may wish to, to, to take that opportunity. Yeah. Uh, I think that um, just before we draw to a close, uh, Lisa will arrange the meeting that was going to be on the 3rd of October for a new meeting date that will need to be arranged. Yes, Chairman, I'll contact members because the 3rd of October now won't be a, at the end of the consultation, so I'll have to contact you with a later date after the 13th of October. Uh, right, so any other business? Chairman, I was just going to say I've emailed all members yesterday about the community engagement events, so if you could let me know your availability as soon as possible because they start from the first weekend in September. Thank you. Councillor Dixon. Any other business? No. Uh, date of next meeting will, will be, be arranged and decided. And uh, okay, so thank you very much for your attendance this morning. <laughs>